Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Design Perspective. I'm Santi. I'm a senior game designer in the game industry, but years ago I used to be a mission designer in Ubisoft Chrome. There I worked in Far Cry 6, a very open world, open world game. So this is part two of open world level design and mission design. We're going through my mission in, in Far Cry 6 called the Lion's Den. So let's go at it. So right now, currently, on the previous video, we talk about what happens all the way outside of the outside of the compound. Right now, we went through the compound through the main gate. So right now, uh, but the pre previous episode, we talk about all the rest of the island. Right now, inside the compound, we found a key and we're going through the main way, the most common way the mission has been approached, which is from here, tackle the mission in this direction. But we're gonna also do the opposite, the least known way for this mission, at least what I've seen. In our playtest, the, the least common way this mission was finished is through this door in this direction. So we're gonna do those two today, if I don't get caught. So the first thing is that missions need to be approached from every direction. We, we have talked about that in the previous video, but now let's talk about something called vantage points. Ubisoft is very adamant on having vantage points in their mission. And it's not necessarily about seeing all the guards that are possible, but it's about giving the player a plan of attack. So we know that there's an enemy there and we have two ways to approach. We can go from the back or from the front. So for now, we're gonna go from, from the front, this way. Funny thing is we gave the players an specific, because four stealth missions tend to be really hard on the player and can be quite frustrating. We gave the player a specific weapon that is silenced, kind of powerful, and uh, kind of as a, like a, as a reward for going through this mission uh, in a stealthy way. So this allows us to be a little bit like more careless or a little bit more action heavy. Another thing that we did is that if you notice, there is a bunch of alarms, alarms around the compound. These alarms are actually, if you disable all the alarms, the mission cannot fail which is a way to reward players. If they want to deactivate all the alarms or the more alarms they activate, the more action-based this mission becomes. Uh, when you approach this, there is a quite significantly, like, like a quite a visible uh, plant that you can climb here that allows you to go into the room. This is again on purpose. And I think this is one of the reasons why the mission, this is one of the most common ways the mission is approached. Let's kill this guy. Uh, it's because it's actually quite an approachable way. And we wanted to have an approachable way in a very common way. I think this, in some ways, this might have been a mistake. Uh, it's actually something I uh, might have regretted in the design of the mission myself because sometimes I wish it was a little bit more complicated or complex but because it's forced stealth uh, it was like a sacrifice we have to do but the reason this mission is for stealth is because of the narrative requirements uh, of the mission so many times uh, game designers will need to adapt to the requirements to the narrative requirements the mission is having at the moment so if we continue here, we can go this way and it gives you a great line of sight against this guard. So with that line of sight done, we can come here and approach our objective and finish the mission. So we gave a player a second vantage point inside the house. The house is actually based on a pre-colonial Spanish traditional house because we wanted to give the, the, the Anton Castillo as a Latin American leader, we wanted to give him a symbol of status, a great symbol of status. So that's why the, the, the house is open in the center. This is traditionally Spanish way of doing fincas or ranchos. And uh, this, is a, this also helps like the player to, if they go through the roof, to see inside the house. 
Uh, but the house is also explorable. It actually becomes a base later in the game. And this was again on purpose, right? Um, so this is the first way and the most common way I see the mission being finished. So now let's try another way. So now we are teleported on the opposite side of the island. So now we are approaching the island, imagining we didn't find a key, we went all the other side and we find a door that does not require a key. So how are we handling this mission now? So if we continue through this path, the opposite side of the island, you explore pretty far away. So we wanted to reward you and not make you backtrack. So we put a door here that does not require a key. And this is very specific. Here, we find the tennis, the tennis court. Now you will find that there is a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, bushes or pots around, and the reason is because even though they might be a slightly strange for a tennis court to have that kind of setup, uh, the reality is that we need to break line of sight. So when you're designing an open world mission, every mission, every level design is very important that you take in consideration line of sight of your enemies and yours as well. So what is the line of sight on what uh, on on the on the player and what is the line of sight on the enemies? So you want to break line of sights as much as possible. Uh, this is why the bu bushes and this is why pots are so prevalent in open spaces like this. We need to break line of sight constantly. Uh, look at it, right? Like it's pots everywhere. Uh, this was just like the best way to break line of sight. Now, but if you go through this area, there's kind of like a secret vantage point. Again, we talk about vantage point. So we, if we go to this secret vantage point, like this is to reward, again, we want to reward player exploration. Not just that, players that explore, we want them to keep moving forward in one way or another. So every road leads to Rome. Every path leads to the center, to the objective. So even if you discover this and you come here on top, you will find a zip line. And in the zip line, as you go through it, I actually really like this. We slow down the zip line here because we believe that it was like a really cool feeling to be zip lining on top of all the guards. And boom, we are back on the ceiling of the house, allowing us to reach our destination. So this is just two ways that this mission can be finished. But I think we can do more, right? Let's try one more. So now we're back. Uh, you guys remember this area. So let's imagine we went, we went this way, we found here, we went on top and we found this key card, right? So this key card, we took the zip line here, we went up the mountain and we found this entrance. So how does that look like from the like 3D perspective? This is the compound and the zip line is around here and it takes us all the way down to the base of this of this uh, cliff, we can climb this cliff, find this entrance, and we can move. So here you find a helipad, but again, every road leads to a vantage point. Every road leads to a vantage point here, which allows us to open our binoculars or our phone here and look for a path forward. This time, we're gonna try to go inside the house. If I get caught, I apologize. So every path, every exploration always leads forward. Every, it's, we want that every, every single path that we find will have a way to move forward into the next stage of the level. So you will find zip lines, ladders, you know, uh, and as you see here, you always have pots. Let's dispatch this guy. Run to be not be seen.
and let's be careful here. So now we enter the house. Here, when you enter the house, you have the main doors there, but you always show danger. This is why this camera is there. Because otherwise players will go out and they'll be seen almost immediately because there's many guards inside. So there is danger there, there is a camera. And we open a door here that opens to a lot of like story, story, like story moments, kind of like a set dressing that exemplifies the villain. You know, this is his house. We got to think about it, right? So you will find paintings of him, his father, his son. That is always, that, that was the idea from the beginning, right? So as we keep moving forward, we got to be careful because ideally there's people playing here yes so there is a guard play like just uh watching tv let's be safe and there should be a guard here now this hallway is very important in design because it's a very good example of breaking lines of sight so you will see constant boxes and constant things the, which with the goal of breaking land lines of sight like so and then through the house we approach our final destination and end the mission well the first beat there's another another beat that is a combat heavy but this is not the purpose you will guys have to probably play it to go through it but this is not the purpose of, of, of this mission. The, mission the, the objective is to exemplify how designers have to think in multiple directions. Think about it as a tree, right? So you start here, you start the mission here, and then you have multiple ways of approaching a mission, right? And you want those multiple ways. You know, they can connect, they become a network. A network of how to get through a mission so if you see there is a way here it becomes a network on how to approach all this like so so as you can see it becomes this whole network this kind of spider web and uh, it's it's it, it's incredibly complicated because the number one thing the number one thing we have to do is actually not the design. So this is where like it gets a little bit more technical. So we talk about decision vantage points, 360 approach. This is something that is real in uh, in uh, in mission design as well. But I think the number one challenge that all level designers and mission designers face is resource management. We cannot spawn all the things that we want in the level. We cannot do everything we want in the level. We usually, Ubisoft, uh, in the case of Far Cry 6, we had something called an AI budget. So AI enemies will have a number from one to three. For example, cameras would be one, elite units would be three, normal units would be two, vehicles would be two, that kind of stuff. And they give us 13 points. And that's all we got. Right, so this is why when you kill an enemy, I spawn another one to investigate specifically that area and takes over the patrol path to keep the mission populated. Because otherwise you can finish in like boop, 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 and you can kill enemies in like two seconds. So this is the number one challenge we all face. So to return to like how this mission was set up, this mission is actually really, really interesting in the sense that it's actually two missions running simultaneously. Because the other thing that missions limit is space. So um, let's bring back Far Cry and I'll show you guys what I mean. So this is the map of Far Cry, right? 
So what we do is that we have two missions running simultaneously, kind of two blocks. We have we have uh, a mission running here and another mission running here. So we have both of them. And each one is divided into sectors because the whole open world, as we talked before in the open world like uh, video, So this all divided into sectors, right? The whole map is divided into sectors. So mission one is running mostly all the NPCs in these three and the keys. And it's taking in consideration and it's spawning the keys in the correct location and it's tracking the keys, which is another reason we had to design the island. So the, the shape of the island is designed based on this limitation. So we knew that we needed to place the, 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 the player there and move from right to left. That way we can isolate most of the resources into three, these three blocks. And then we can, we can focus on these, mostly these four blocks. And usually it would be more, these ones would look more like this. This line would be here. And um, this line would be gone, like that. So, and then we can focus the other block on this, this thing, on these ones. Now, the thing is because it's two missions running simultaneously, the reason we needed to do that is because of the AI, so that I have enough AI to populate the area during the mission. So, they, I have 13 points, I have 13 points here and 13 points here for a total of 26 points, which is double than what regular missions usually would have. But the disadvantage is that can, I can only spawn, I can only, I can only have one of those, one or either this area or this area can be populated at the same time. So if you, it's really funny and you can discover, if you try it out, if you play this mission, you tell me if you try it out. But let's erase all this and I'll show you what I mean. So if you, if you, let's say, go inside, if you go inside this area, if you go inside this area and then go out of this compound, all the enemies here, there's a high chance they might have this bond. Or you'll see them repeat their patrol paths. Either they despawn and spawn again, and you'll see them reset from the beginning. They will, they will not appear where they were because I'm destroying them. All these guys, I'm destroying them the moment you go inside the compound. And then if you go, you leave the compound and then you enter the compound, uh, you will see the enemies again. Most probably when you go in, you will not see these enemies again because I'm freeing the memory there. These enemies do not exist the moment you enter the compound because I don't have the memory for it. I just really don't. So you can technically, once you enter the compound, you can technically go out and explore freely. Nothing is stopping you. But I had to use the, 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 the thing is that I had to do it because I had limited, but I also use the objective to my advantage. The objective is here, right? So sooner or later, so I know that I know that the challenge is not gone because I know that the enemies inside the compound will remain. Originally, yeah, I, if I remember correctly, we would reset depending on either if you jump from this side or this side, if you jump from side to side, we would reset them, but it would cause a lot of issues, a lot of issues, because the final thing that is like a struggle in open world games is because of the systemic nature of them. You cannot give direct orders to the AI. You can only suggest the AI to do certain things. You cannot tell like AI, go here, ignore everything else. You cannot do that. It's all systemic. 
So I can only leverage the AI using the system to go to where I want the AI to go, which AI tends to be very unpredictable. In a forced stealth mission, it causes problems. So that's why you will see that we give, we try to make it as tense as possible, but at the same time, we try to facilitate to create, to not cause frustration in the mission. And this is something that happened a lot in Far Cry 6. To avoid frustration with the systems in the mission design, we ended up having to create things significantly easier or compact, you know, and then you end up with missions that can be a little bit not memorable, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I am my harshest critic uh, in this sense. I am my harshest critic. Uh, and I think that I learned a lot from this mission. A lot. I learned a lot from this mission. Uh, but I also learned the difficulties of open world and how constricting can be for designers in a way. Anyway, this is Lion's Den Beat 1. If you want to see the other, the rest of the mission, you'll have to play it. But this is Lions End Part 2. Thank you so much. Please comment, uh, subscribe, like the video. Tell me what you think about Far Cry 6. Tell me what you think about this mission. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, one of the things that designers need to be very, very aware is to receive feedback. And this is an opportunity to receive feedback on work I did. So I appreciate if you comment on it. If you liked it, if you played it, if it looked interesting or not, or if you have level design questions. Uh, this is the game design perspective. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.